What's going on smart people? Today I gotta finish a lot of quantum mechanics homework. And whenever I have to do homework for this class, I always have to pull from multiple resources to try to figure these problems out. Thankfully, I have several quantum mechanics textbooks. So for today's video, I thought I'd talk about what books I own for quantum mechanics and how helpful I find them. The first question that you might ask is why, why would you need more than one textbook in the first place? Well, not all textbooks teach at the same level. Some skip over certain materials, some emphasize it heavily, some are more formal than others, and some rely more on context and concepts in general. So I like to have my options. The first one that I have, I'm going to start with the one that I'm not the most fond of, which is just called Quantum Physics by, I always mess up his name, but Stephen Gasiorowicz. This was one of the recommended textbooks for my undergraduate quantum mechanics course, this and another one which I'll get into. Uh, and it's really hit or miss for me to be honest. At certain points it's pretty rigorous and formal and then it'll skip over a section that would be kind of important to maybe your quantum class. For example, if you're doing addition of angular momentum, this kind of skips over Clebsch-Gordon coefficients, which is pretty important. Something that I do like, uh, what you'll find in pretty much all the quantum mechanics textbooks is they'll introduce a set number of postulates, like assumptions that have to be made, and then you can derive the rest of quantum mechanics. Uh, one of which is that the state vector, the wave function, will obey the Schrodinger equation. So that's kind of two assumptions in there. One is that things are represented by wave functions, and two, that the Schrodinger equation works for them and what it is. Uh, this one actually sort of attempts to derive it a little bit by constructing a wave packet and differentiating it, combining terms, and then you arrive at the Schrodinger equation. So I appreciate the effort with that, but I, I really don't use this one very much. Sometimes if all else fails and I can't find maybe an example or something in other textbooks, I'll scour through this one and see if I can find something. Now, moving on to Griffiths. Everyone loves Griffiths. I pretty much have my Griffiths e &M book by my bedside at all times. Well, he also has a quantum mechanics textbook, which is really good for undergrads. I say it's good for undergrads because you, you kind of outgrow it. It's not all that formal. What it does have, though, is it has great explanations of concepts. It does have math. I don't mean to imply that it's just all hand wavingness. It does have the math. But you can just sort of tell that it's meant for undergrads, people who might have never really seen quantum mechanics before. And I, and I say that you can really tell this because it waits a while to introduce Dirac notation, which is just, just abstract kind of linear algebra notation for quantum mechanics that really simplifies the notation a bit. And if you were to show that to an undergrad right away, they wouldn't really see all the mechanics of the moving pieces that are going on. So I can understand why they introduce it this way, but once you've had a couple courses in quantum, you'd like to jump into that right away. So. One thing that I do really like about Griffiths is all of the examples. There's so many examples in Griffiths, so if you want to see the theory and then how to apply it to an actual state or something like that, Griffiths is really nice for that. This kind of has the same shortcoming, though, that, that uh, Gasiorowicz does, where once the stuff gets a little difficult, they kind of skip over it. The example, again, is Klebsch-Gordon coefficients. At least this one talks about it for a second, but, but you've got to go to more advanced quantum mechanics textbooks to learn more advanced quantum. I guess that kind of makes sense. Personally, I haven't really found the perfect undergraduate physics textbook for quantum mechanics, but I think Griffiths is, it's all right. It's not perfect. It's not like the e &M Griffiths book. That one's amazing. This one is okay. Uh, now, moving up a notch is the Shankar book. I think this is a good kind of intermediate book in between the Griffiths book and the final book, which I'll talk about. This is much more, I guess, advanced. This could, this is definitely a graduate textbook for quantum mechanics, but it's also pretty practical, like Griffiths tries to be. So, if Griffiths gives you a little bit of hand waviness and you want to see more rigor, uh, the Shankar book will definitely be a good supplement for your undergraduate quantum mechanics course, and it'll age well into graduate. This is one of the books that I use for my graduate quantum mechanics course. It starts out by uh, going over classical mechanics, and then it shows where classical mechanics fails, it introduces postulates of quantum mechanics, and then it goes from there. So definitely, I guess if you're an undergrad, I would, I would supplement, if you're using Griffiths, I would supplement it with the Shankar book. The Branston book is also really good, but I just don't own that one. Uh, also, if you're interested in the Feynman path integral formulation of quantum mechanics, the Shankar book has two different chapters on it, which is pretty cool. Also gets into the Dirac equation towards the end, so it starts going towards the relativistic quantum. Uh, and now let's go to the final textbook, which is Modern Quantum Mechanics by Sakurai. This is probably my favorite textbook out of the bunch. Uh, it's, it's, it's less wordy, I guess, but not that much more. It's, it's pretty on par with the Shankar book, to be honest, but it doesn't attempt to be as practical as the Shankar book. And sometimes it's just nice to just see, see the physics and be like, okay, I understand that it's applicable, but just show me the physics. One of the things that I don't particularly like with the Sakurai book is the, 
The proof is trivial. There's a lot of those in this book, which is kind of frustrating. This also only has like one section on Feynman path integrals, so sorry if, you, if, you, if you're a Feynman boy. Uh, but this also goes into the Dirac equation towards the end, which is cool. This book is just, it's super formal. It's very, very formal. It's not meant to be for undergrads. I would not recommend it for an undergrad unless you've already had experience with quantum before. It jumps right into Dirac notation, as does Shankar, but this is probably an easier transition, I suppose. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm starting to go back on what I said about this one being my favorite. To be honest, my favorite is having both of these. They really kind of complete each other. They have almost identical information, but presented it in a different way, which is never a bad thing. It's having one person explain something one way, another person explaining something the other way. That's just, it's, it's another perspective, which is nice. Uh, so these ones I really, really recommend. There's way, there's so many quantum mechanics textbooks out there. So if you guys have other ones that you highly recommend, let me know in the comment section below so that other people can see it. And I'll see you guys there. And I'll see you tomorrow.